Father God, we can truly say tonight, your goodness have caught up with us. The blood of Jesus has taken away our sins. Our names have been written in the Lamb's book of life. And we are where we are standing here right now, we can truly sing of your goodness. Therefore, we praise you tonight. We worship you tonight. And we bring you honour and glory in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Spirit, have your way tonight. Move amongst us. Help us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you, church. Thank you to the band. What a beautiful day it has been. Praise God. Good evening, church. We hope you've had a wonderful day because we are going to have a wonderful evening. Praise God for that. And uh, we are staying on the topic of the day. And Pastor Harold was this morning busy with the power of the blood of Jesus for those who were here uh, with the first service. And what a wonderful topic it is. It is the most powerful thing you can talk about on this planet is the blood of Jesus Christ. And praise God for that. The reason why we are seated here is because of the blood of Jesus Christ. No other thing, just the blood. So we're gonna stay on that topic. It's not a wonderful topic in the church world. The liberal church doesn't even mention the blood of Jesus. To the liberal church, it's a gory subject. To the atheists, all of the atheists, I've, I've went to see what they mention. They say, Christianity would be so wonderful if they would just leave out blood. <laughs> but we live by the blood of Jesus. If you remove the blood, we die immediately. We're dead, gone. But it's about the blood. Amen. Praise God for that. Praise the Lord. I believe the Lord is going to set some people free here tonight. The blood of Jesus Christ is the centre of Christianity. You can reflect on love, goodness, kindness. You can reflect on many things. But the one thing that stands out, what Christianity is all about, is the blood. If you don't understand the blood of Jesus, you are half a Christian. Then basically, you do. You cannot operate by faith in the power of God. And God wants every person to start moving by the knowledge of what His blood has done and is still busy doing. So it's a serious topic. Some, I totally understand now, whenever it comes where any preacher wanna touch this subject, things happen. <laughs> and things always happen in this church. I was smiling this morning when Pastor Harold spoke about the fly, Beelzebub. When our pastor wanted to take a nap and that little Beelzebub was flying all over. Now I feel the same about mosquitoes. Because the fly comes and drops something, but the mosquito comes and takes something. And I haven't allowed any mosquito to take my blood, but yet they love my blood. So now I have invested in those things you plug into the wall and it works. So I'm advertising here right now. It truly works. <laughs> I don't have anything for a fly, but thank God flies don't move at night. But those mosquitoes, they move, they keep you awake. And you know when they've been around, <laughs> because it gets itchy, praise the Lord. But let's get back to the message. The message of the blood of Jesus Christ as we move closer to Passover is something that we have to take serious and I do recommend that every person here takes time, really take time 
to go and spend around the scriptures that speaks about the blood. And it is because of the blood that I'm standing here. I remember when I first started hearing about the casting out of demons, because you don't hear that anymore. When the Lord left the earth, the demons went away. It's a lie. It's a big lie. I remembered when I experienced the first demon. It was a horrifying story. And I realised that this is the place where the supernatural meets up with the natural. And there's great power released when that happens. I've seen our pastor cast out many demons through the years. But when it came for me to cast out demons, I quickly had to understand what it means to really operate through the blood of Jesus. Because you can pray and the demon is, and you can can say anything and the demon is, he will keep you busy. But please stay away from a certain terminology. Stay away from mentioning the blood. Because the moment you mention the blood, then, then the power of God is released. And we have seen that. We have experienced it. And there's a lot of demons hanging around. But this message tonight is about our Saviour and His body and what came from His body. The life-giving blood of Jesus Christ. Church, let us go to our first Scripture. Revelation 12 from verse 7. Revelation 12 from verse 7. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail. Good news. Nor was place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the world. He was cast out to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of the brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast out. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to death. I really believe we are the last generation walking this planet. Major things are about to come to the front but the kind of Christian that God needs that will operate in the blood of Jesus is the person that do not love his life. If you still love your life and you have too many plans, you'll be too busy for God. But because there's a great work that needs to be done on this planet here on the West Rand, in the area that you live, in the area that you work, in your family. And the great work that needs to be done is a work by the blood of Jesus. And you'll see the moment you start operating with a power that is released from the blood of Jesus, that's the moment you'll experience God's power as never before. It is time for us to come in line with what the blood is saying to the church. And the blood is saying to the church, rise up up, rise up because the power of God is released only through the blood. There is no other power available to the church, but yet it's powerful. I cannot, what is inside of me cannot be put in words. I remembered when I first time experienced the blood of Jesus and it was in the Bible school because we know things, we experience things. But the moment when that word becomes rhema word inside of you, something, you change. 
I was seated in that auditorium next door and Dorki Begeman was teaching us about the blood covenant. Up to that point, you hear things, you understand a little bit about things. But that day, God let me experience what it means when the blood of Jesus makes covenant. And I changed. From that point onward, I was a changed person. And when I started moving and experiencing the supernatural, I understood what the blood of Jesus is doing and wants to do. And it's powerful, people. It's powerful. But the problem with us is the thing called sin. Sin is the one thing that Jesus came for. But the body of Christ cannot stay in sin. The blood cannot work because the blood has done the work. The blood has done a major work. But if we always have to go back, always go back to that meagerly, beggarly elements, then we can never operate on the blood level, the power level, the casting out of demon level, the healing level, the prophetic level. Oh, church, the blood of Jesus is working. And we see that between this place, earth, and the third heaven, I don't know of a seventh heaven. If you know of such a place, I don't read it. There are three heavens. And between the, the, this heaven and the place where Father God is, there's a place called the second heaven. That's the place where your destiny and every plan about you is formed for you through darkness. And you need the blood of Jesus to overcome that dimension. Daniel experienced that. Daniel experienced the power of God because he went on his knees and he prayed. And when he prayed, God gave the greatest revelation about planet earth to that man. The blood level, the power level. It's time church. No matter who you are, you might say, but pastor, you know, I, I, I'm not that kind of person. When you've experienced the blood of Jesus, you become that kind of person. You become someone you've never been because you know it's not you. <laughs> That's the wonderful thing. The day I cast out the first demon and I heard the growlings and, and the, the curse and, and how that thing went on, I said, my goodness, what is this? But then suddenly I knew that this is the Spirit of God in operation. And I loved it till this day. I love it. I love to see the Holy Spirit at work. The Holy Spirit doesn't play games. He is powerful. I'm going in another direction. Let me come back. <laughs> Dear church, there's another level. There's another, another level God wants to use us. You see, every plan is orchestrated regarding your life on the darkness dimension. And Satan's name is a, re, he's a resistor. He's an adversary of every purpose of God. Everything that God wants for you, Satan has got a counter answer. But the counter answer to Satan is the blood. We've, we need to get where we call upon the blood of Jesus. And when you call upon that blood, it works, you'll see. See, here on earth, Jesus Christ came as a man with the most precious, his most precious blood inside his body, contained in his vessel, the one thing we need, Jesus had. Do you know that one drop of blood, if you take all the power, that exists in the universe with Satan and all his demons, if you take all the power that exists, just one tiny droplet of Jesus Christ sorts out and is greater than all the power of the enemy. One drop. 
Now, we have the full promise of the working of His blood working through us. Not just a droplet. We have the power of God. Ephesians 6 from verse 12 says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers and against the rulers of darkness of this age and against the spiritual host of wickedness in heavenly places. That's the place that you need to influence with your life. And you can, even if you're a teenager, if you're a little child, if you're a grandmother, that's the place the place where you enter, the place of power. Any person that leans on Jesus, leans on the blood of Jesus. And how great is that power not? But you see people, sin causes people to step backward. If Satan can get any person to take a step backward, the blood cannot operate. And what did the blood first do? The blood of Jesus has two operations. First of all, it is the one thing that took away the sins of this world. But it is the one thing where God's power is still manifesting on this planet. Many people think that the blood stopped working. Thank you, God, I'm saved, I'm going to heaven. Now I can sit back and relax. That's where the real battle only starts. That's why then you call upon the blood. God is about to use His people. He's about to remind people what His blood can do for you still in your future. See, the earth is a place of conflict. Do you know that there's no resolution for peace on this planet? Nothing. If we think there will ever be peace on this planet, there will never be peace on this planet. The only people that experience peace of God's children through the blood of Jesus. If you are not experiencing peace, <laughs> yes, praise His name. If you are not experiencing peace, you're not, you're not using the blood. You're not calling upon the blood. Blood brings peace. His blood. So you have to ask yourself the question, what is my part on this planet? What, is, what am I to do for God on this planet? Here's the thing. What you do, you do through the blood of Jesus. If you do that, you'll have success. If you don't do it, low faith, nothing happens. You see, Satan's job is to accuse us. Our job is to do the real resistance. And the resistance we do is in the blood, by the blood of Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For He made Him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. Jesus knew no sin, so that His blood could sort out the sin of this planet. And when His blood sorted out that, then He transferred His righteousness to us. Now we operate with that righteousness of God and that is activated by His blood, powerful blood. Matthew 6, 33 says, you see, we seek first His kingdom and His righteousness. His kingdom and His righteousness. That seeking is in humility, not in look at me. You know, I've cast out a hundred demons. None of that stuff. None of that stuff. Thank God that He wants to use me and you. Praise God for that. In humility, we come to Him. Isaiah 64, 6 says, But we are all like an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are like filthy rags. We all weighed as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. The best we can do is not good enough. Your best effort cannot make it. Your wisest effort cannot make it. But the moment you come over to the bloodline, the moment you trust upon the blood for everything in your life, that's the moment the power of God truly comes into a person's life. See, God is busy with a generation 
that will know His blood and understand His blood because it's the only way to overcome in this planet, on this planet. Satan's greatest work is done when he keeps people away from understanding what the blood can do. He hates it when we talk about blood. But I've had a blood transfusion. Praise God for that. You too. I'm no, God has given me what, what, what was inside of him. So therefore, there's no excuse for me not to be powerful. No excuse for any person here to stand back and wonder, you know, should, uh, would, would. Man, oh man, go and try. Even tonight, as your husband sleeps, lay your hand on him. You'll see, something will happen. If he's not saved, something will happen. But I need to get to the place where it all happened. I want you to quickly go into Exodus 12. Go to Exodus 12. Got to establish the foundation of God's Word. Exodus 12, I'm just gonna jump to certain scriptures and deal with some things tonight. Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt saying, this month shall be your beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year. Speak to all the congregation of Israel saying, on the 10th of this month, every man shall take for himself a lamb according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. Verse five. Your lamp shall be without blemish, a male of the first year, and you may, you may take it from the sheep or from the goats. Now you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight. Someone was killed at twilight. And they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses where they eat. Then they shall eat the flesh on that night, roasting in fire with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs, they shall eat it. Go to verse 13. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. So this day, shall be to you a memorial and you shall keep it as the feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it as a feast by an everlasting ordinance. It is one time, and this is not condemnation for any person here, but uh, it is one time I'm in church throughout, throughout my salvation. Good Friday, it's a good Friday. So this day shall be to you a memorial and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations and you shall keep it as a feast by an everlasting ordinance, an everlasting ordinance. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. On the first day you shall remove leaven from your houses for whoever eats leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that person shall be cut off from Israel. Leaven is sin. Once the blood has worked in your life and is busy working in your life, the dealing with sin, you change. Sin becomes minimal. The focus of one's life, you become productive. You become focused. You become, you become like Christ. You are changed into another person. Otherwise, the blood is not working. It's a scary thought. It's a very scary thought. And I'm, and I'm trying to encourage you not to sin. Then verse 22, here comes the key. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop. You know what hyssop is? It's not a soup. It's, a, it's actually a weed <laughs> that you can eat. It's a herb. Yeah, but in, in Israel, all over you can, in the streets, hyssop. But listen to this, dip it in the blood 
that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two doorposts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out of the door of his house until morning, for the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and not allow the destroyer to come into your houses to strike you. And you shall observe this thing as an ordinance for you and your sons. What? Forever. Let's deal with what is happening here. Blood on the lintel, blood on the doorposts. There's a blood in a bucket. There's an animal that died, that they killed. And the blood was taken into a bucket. And that blood had to, they had to take hyssop and splatter the place and cover it to make markings so that God could, when He passes over, He could see there's an unblemished animal that died here so that I do not strike this household. Strangest thing on this planet is that all the Israelites, nothing There's nothing that touched them. Blood brings protection. For those of us who are fearful, for those of us who are tired and we are scared, it is time to call upon the blood. Because I want to tell you, the blood is still working. The blood is working tonight here. Passover was God's means to bring Israel out. A lamp had to be chosen and slain. Total protection was in the blood and on the lintel and the doorposts, but no blood on the threshold. No blood on the threshold. They had to be very careful how they used the blood. If you misuse the blood, you can die. And they took very careful attention to what they did because God's instructions were very straight to them. And this is the thing with the threshold and the blood. The hyssop basically is the application between that blood and the doorpost. You used hyssop. That hyssop is basically what becomes our testimony, the application, the application of the blood, the transference of the blood. And what is the hyssop? It is and it becomes my, you'll see I'll read your scripture, my testimony. When I speak, when I call upon the blood, when I take the hyssop and I transfer the blood to my problems, to my situations, to my difficulties. The blood works because the blood saves. And it's powerful, church. Let's praise His holy name. So we have to testify personally what the blood does. A personal testimony, what the blood does. To whom do we testify? To whom do we testify that the blood works? Satan. That's where the testimony lies. I remind him that Jesus cast him down. When you don't remind him, when, you're te- when you don't apply the blood to your life, to your lintels, to your doorpost, then he comes in. The blood in the bucket is worthless. But applied blood is powerful. And that's the testimony of my lips. It is time that I speak by the blood of Jesus into being what God wants me to have and to be. So, the Passover lamb, when God sees the blood, God sees the victory. When God sees the blood, God sees His Son. When God sees His Son, He is happy. (laughs) That is why the blood applied to our lives with salvation. That's the only way God could face us. So we could face God. 
Not God could face us. We could face God. It's the only way we could face God. If He doesn't see the blood, there's no way, no entrance into His presence. There's no protection. So, sealed lips are silent testimony with no power. The new covenant in Jesus was activated and has activated the power of God. You see, the blood was carefully transferred from the bucket to the doorposts. And it's a very scary thing. I've got a scripture here. I just wanna make sure that I get the right thing here. That we do not trample the blood of Jesus with sin, because sin is trampling the blood of Jesus. Listen to this, Hebrews 10, 29. Of how much worse punishment do you suppose will he be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing and insulted the Spirit of grace? For we know him who said, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge his people. And then verse 31, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. We must be very careful what we do with his son. Because what you do with his son is what God the Father will do with you. When we have the blood and we call on the blood and we apply the blood, then everything in our lives works out. Then it, you can go through any difficulty, but the power of God is released. You see, personal testimony is the atomic confession over myself. And the hyssop is the personal testimony of application. We need to start applying Ephesians 1 verse 7 says, In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace, which He made to abound toward all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of His will according to His good pleasure, which He purposed in Himself that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times, He might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth. Redemption through His blood. Pastor Harold mentioned that this morning, that your redemption happened through His blood. Blood is a powerful thing. The blood of Jesus. Here's the thing about blood. The blood contains the life of a person. That is why the Word of God and throughout this day it was mentioned that you cannot eat blood. Not allowed to eat, why? Because then you eat life. You, you're only allowed to eat by symbolism the blood of Jesus. Pastor Harold even mentioned this morning, be careful when you go to a restaurant and they put a bloody mess there. <laughs> I know that some of you, <laughs> that is why in the Old Testament you'll read that you're only allowed to eat an animal that was slaughtered because the blood flew out. But an animal that just died, all the blood is still inside and the blood stiffened up. You cannot eat that. It's a serious matter because the life is in the blood. And here's the thing about you cannot eat life. You Life is transferred to you by the blood of Jesus. Life, therefore, the blood of an animal. Here's the thing about animals, if you don't know it, because an animal cannot sin. Animals are clean. Their blood is clean from contamination of sin. And only animal blood or animal blood could cover sins, but it could not take away sins. Because here's the thing in the Old Testament, and we don't have enough time to go into it. You have sins of omission and sins of commission. Sins of omission is sins that basically, unwittingly you do it. And there's no penalty for that. But there are certain sins. If you did those sins, you were killed immediately. And those are sexual sins. 
Oeh, nou gaan het wildraak in die plek. <laughs> Sexual sins. If you were caught adulterating, you died on the spot. If you murdered someone, you will be murdered. There's no, no blood can cover that kind of sin. Do you, do you know that? Your blood had to be uh, splurted or used for your life. But no blood of an animal could cover that kind of sins. And you can go and read Leviticus 18 about what those kind of sins are, and especially sexual sins. And idolatry, if you were found with idolatry immediately, there's no blood that could cover that. Nothing. But you see, that's where the blood of Jesus comes in. That's where the blood of Jesus is different because the blood of Jesus is the only blood that could cover all kinds of sin. Praise God for that. <laughs> so, whatever kind of mistake you've made, repent quickly because Jesus' blood can take it away. And it wants to take it away. Hebrews 13, 12 says, Therefore Jesus also, that He might sanctify the people with His own blood, suffered outside the gate. See, I am made holy. Jesus is busy. Jesus is the sanctifier. The Lord Jesus, except for the fact that He bought you. I had a conversation with a certain person in the church and I said, your body does not belong to you. The moment you accept Jesus as your personal Saviour, that's the moment you transfer spirit, soul and body to Him so that He might have the grace work inside of you. Therefore, I cannot do with this body what I want to. I cannot tonight light a cigarette. <laughs> I cannot get drunk. I cannot fornicate. I cannot look at another woman. I'm not allowed to because this belongs to Jesus. I have to be very careful how I treat this. I am not my own. I do not belong to myself. You see, when His blood transferred life to me, it is eternal life that is transferred. But if the blood is not found with you, then eternal death is dead your destiny. And there's only two places, eternal death for those who want to keep their life or eternal life for those who have accepted the life of Jesus through His blood. So we need to seriously, church, look at sin in our lives. It is time for us to look at the little things, the little foxes. 1 Corinthians 6.15 says, Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. This is deep stuff. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. I'm sinning against what God, this doesn't belong to me anymore. I cannot just go on a night out and say, tomorrow the Lord's blood will wash me. It's the most dangerous thing you can do in your life. Especially if you're a child of God. It's dangerous. And it's even where, where, where the people, when it came to the communion, where fleshly Christians came just to eat, sit down with a meal, and they did not think about what the blood of Jesus has done for them. God has literally killed such people. This is quite serious. These things we need to share with the church because this is a church of truth. This is a good flow of water of the Spirit that comes through here. Streams of living water flow through those whom are blood washed. If the stream is not flowing, take out the garbage. 
Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own, for you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. The moment you click, the moment the light comes, the light comes on that I do not belong to myself. That's the moment I become so responsible with my mouth and my life and my eyes and my faculties. It's hard to get an amen on these things. <laughs> Hebrews 12, 24, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks of better things than that of Abel. You see, Abel's blood was the first person's blood that flowed. But Abel's blood called out to God. What did, he, what did Abel's blood do? Abel's blood accused his brother. What does Jesus' blood do? It excuses the transgressor. It's powerful. His blood do not accuse me, but it's the one thing that excuses me. And I thank God for that. Praise His holy name. Oops, there goes the paper. So I'm not my own. Do not worry about the coronavirus, okay? Just some good news for you. Literally, I do not even think about it. It's, it's not even something worth thinking about. It, 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 wash, we need to wash our hands. I love washing my hands. But, but you know, let, let the blood wash you. <laughs> let, let you be clean. Because here's the thing about us. Really, this is my mindset. Sudden death, sudden glory. Finish and claw. Praise His holy name. I know I'm not supposed to say that. Now some of you say, oh, that's my ticket out of this place. Who's got the corona? No, please. Please don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Don't go and sit at the airport just to have lunch there now. Be, be very careful. You need to go and pray for those people. The most powerful confession in dealing in the spiritual dimension is when a person applies the blood when you speak about the blood of Jesus, when you talk about the blood, because it still works. See, the light of Jesus comes where the blood is activated. When the blood is applied, the power of the Spirit is released against all darkness. Against all darkness. Satan would do everything and anything in his power to silence you, not to talk about the blood of Jesus. You can talk about anything. You can talk about the love of God for a million years. You, t you can talk about the most wonderful things in the book. Just stay away from the blood. And that's the place, let's go to the blood. You know, this month, when it comes to Passover, it's the month where it's trembling time. It's where the whole body of Christ rises up to remind him of his future. And his future is not good, oh, I promise you. His future is not good. Tonight, I believe that the Lord wants to set people free here. And I'm going to do a certain specific thing tonight here. I, it's two things we are going to do. Pastor or evangelist or prophet or whatever, Derek Prince, in his conferences that he did, he had people make confessions. And then the power of God was released. I want us to do that here tonight. But before we do that, we need the blood to work in our midst here tonight. Everybody bow your head, please. If you have come into this place tonight and you know in your heart, you are definitely not at the right place. If you know tonight that if you were to die tonight, you will be in hell. But God has brought you here. It's not by coincidence that you are here tonight. The Lord brought you here that you might get a blood transfusion, that He might take away your sin because it's the one thing you need. If that is you tonight and you say, you know what, playing games is over. 
This night, I'm making right with God. Then I want you by faith to raise up your hand quickly in this place. Please raise up your hands. There's a hand, go, there's another hand, yes. There's more hands there at the back. Do not let the devil keep you. Yes, there's another hand there at the back. Do not let the devil keep you. You can put down your hands. Do not let the devil keep you in the place of darkness. If you have once served God with your heart and now you are backslidden, you know you're not at the right place. You're actually scared to serve God because Satan has taken you and he has silenced you. Then it's tonight your turn to say, Father God, I wanna make right. If that is you, put up your hands, please. Put up your hands, yes. There's more hands coming up, great, great. We're not ashamed of Jesus Christ. They're at the back as well, they're at the back as well. Yes, here at this place, we're not ashamed of Jesus. Now, everybody that raised their hands, please raise it high for me. I wanna see where you are, please raise it high. All over the place, raise up your hands. Yes, do not, do not be shy now, yes. All right, all of you, please stand up quickly. Please stand up in your place. Please stand up, please stand up. Yes. Please stand up. There at the back, there was someone here in front. Please stand up. Please stand up. Come to the front here. Come to the front. Please come here. Please quickly come here to me. Great stuff. Please come and stand here in the front. Yes. This is absolutely wonderful. This is absolutely wonderful. Thank you, church. Yes, we need another lady over here. Just one more lady over here, or two more, two more, two ladies, thank you. Thank you. There is so much power available here. <laughs> Church, there's waves of God's power here in the front of the church. Please raise up your hands to God. All of you here in the front, please raise up your hands. Please raise up. It's the first time for some that ever you've raised up your hands. I want you to pray after me right now and say the following words. Say, Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I ask you tonight to please wash me in the blood of Jesus and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Father God, tonight I forgive every person that has ever hurt me or harmed me. Father, tonight I accept your Son, Jesus Christ, into my life. Father, tonight I surrender and I ask you to please write my name in the book of life and give me the Holy Spirit and fire. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 yes. <laughs> okay, one thing about what you have done now. You see, to be a real Christian, you cannot be a sissy. You've got to now speak. And go and tell, I want you tonight as you go home, go and tell every person you know that you are saved. Everybody, everybody. Tomorrow when you get to school, tell your teacher first and every single person at your workplace, that's the way we spread the testimony. That's where the power starts working. When people get quiet, then you, be, then you move backward. So from this night, I want you next Sunday to come and show me who's the first person you send the message to. All right, and we will contact you this week and God is gonna, there's some great things in your lives waiting for you, amen. Just one thing we need you to do. We quickly want you to turn to your heart side that, and follow that pastor. We just wanna spend five minutes with you. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I 
I believe as we are going to do a confession here right now, that in the Spirit, God is gonna help many people and set many people free from, yes, the Word, what I got in my spirit, bondage. Many people, you, you, you just battle to walk in victory. You just don't get to the place where you walk in victory. And it's not anything that you can do, but it's something that God wants to do for you. And I have accepted that in my life. Whenever I battle to overcome something, I need grace. And then God, 100% of all times, God sends His grace and His blood works. So now, I want everybody to stand, please. I want you to purposefully humble yourself. Close your eyes. Humble yourself before God right now. And see the problem area of your life. If there is such an area. Or maybe there's an area where you need to stand up and be bold. But the Holy Spirit is busy working, setting people free here tonight. I want you to make the following confession after me. Everybody raise up your hands. And say after me, through the blood of Jesus, I am redeemed. Out of the hand of the devil, through the blood of Jesus, all my sins are forgiven. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses me and continually cleanses me. Through Jesus' blood, I am sanctified, I am made holy, I am set apart. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. I am redeemed. I am cleansed. I am sanctified by the blood of Jesus. Therefore, Satan has no hold on me because I live by faith in the Son of God. Shout it out in the Son of God. In the Son of God, in the Son of God, I put my trust in Jesus' Name. I will walk in victory. I will not be afraid. I will testify by the power of God. In Jesus' Name, Amen. Amen, yes. Church, let me pray for you. Let us go and have a fantastic week. Let us bring someone that we have been witnessing to to church next week. It is time for us to activate the blood of Jesus in our lives. Let us pray. Father God, Lord, I thank you for every person that have come to this place tonight. Lord, what a wonderful crowd of people. Lord, these evening services are so energetic and powerful. I pray, Father, Lord, as we release your people to go into this world to testify of the blood of Jesus. Father, to go and apply the blood of Jesus in this lost world because it's the only living thing on this planet still working, the blood of Jesus. We thank you for that tonight. Father, as well, I pray tonight as we again come against this virus in South Africa, We break its power in Jesus' mighty name. We resist it and we cancel it in Jesus' mighty name. And oh God, we pray as well for this economy up till the night that all of us will pray together, Father. We pray that this yoke upon South Africa and its economy is broken in Jesus' name. Amen. (laughs) Praise the Lord. You know what? I think we're going to have an excellent week. Go in the peace of God. Amen.